the the weekend in my barber shop. This is amazing. How are you? What's up, Julio? What's going on, man? I heard you had a your yeah. barber thing going on. Yeah, I just man. wanted to get a little haircut, man. Yeah, yeah, man. This is great. Like I got my own business now. Like I I got clippers. Look, I got clippers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yo, yo, dude. Yeah. Um. So what do you want, man? Yo, I, I'm on tour, man. Okay. I, I know I have this big crazy ass boss guy mm-hmm. here, man. Been growing yeah. this shit out for like seven years. I just want you to trim. A little bit off the top. I heard you're the best, man. I just say, wanna, actually, say no more, Abel. Say no more. Just say that. Have a seat. Hold up. Well, I'm yo, a seat. And, and like, how many customers have you had, man? Uh, you. Uh, we just opened about uh 15 minutes ago. So uh, pull up, man. Just say good. Have a seat. Have a seat, man. Oh, uh, okay. Have you heard my new album? Uh, uh, no. Um, okay. So I'm just gonna start here. I don't. I don't do small oh, yo, talk. Yo, easy. Just, just a little bit uh, off. This is part of my brand. You know okay, what I'm saying? Okay. Man? Okay. All right. So. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, hey, oh, okay, okay. Chill, uh, chill. Wait, I, I, I didn't mean to. Uh, I, think, I think it looks good. I nicked a little too much. All right, you know, we, we can work with that. It's not, it's not bad. Uh, it's or cool, I'm going to cool. try to work around it, okay? All right, hold, All right. just ho, ho, hold still. Uh, hold, uh, stop uh, moving your head, dog. dog. I'm not, I'm not even moving, like dude. I, I, oh, I. Whoa, shit. Ah, what the. F- hey, man. Hey, uh, hey, what the fuck? I, dog, I. Hey man, hey, 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 a big ass, big ass piece, piece of my hair. Came, got, what you, the fuck? You got uh, what the pa- fuck patches are in, bro. Uh, what the fuck? What the fuck is this, man? I'm never gonna be king of the fall now. You're listening to the Double D's podcast. I'm Dom. I'm your respect. You're getting great sedatives. I get so angry thinking about this kid. Because that's what most people are bitching about. I'm from New York. You heard me. We like to eat out here. You, know? you gotta stop looking at interacting with people online as a cheap date. <gasps> My father used to drink. Get the fuck away from me. I'm done. I come a lot, by the way. Hey, you're a good the rap stuff. If you didn't say it, somebody in the comment section would have said it. It's like how you feel when you're having a paranoid high. That's a dynamic connection right there. You're listening to Double D's. I'm Dom. I'm D-Respect. Folks, the Double D's Skidcast has been out since, since September 1st. In the description below, for the low, low price of $9.99, you can get a hold of the Double D's Skidcast, a assortment of audio sketches constructed by myself and Mr. Rab Run. It is available on Amazon, Google Play, and iTunes, get it today. Yeah, yeah, get it today. And by the way, by the way, we will be answering a a, a, a great amount of of your your sna- oh, excuse me of your Snapchat questions. Normally, we answer about two. Uh, we're gonna get to about six or seven of them uh, yeah. later on in the show. Maybe we'll spread it out. We'll see. We'll play it by the ear. That's that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play it by the ear. You know what I'm doing right now? What are you doing? I'm doing a snap of my my bottle of lotion on my desk live right now on Snapchat, dude. Why Why are you doing that? I'm snapping my lotion. And he, you know what I'm doing? What's that? Yeah, that's what we're doing. Is over that here. a vibrator? Uh, no, it's uh, it's a vibrator, folks. Yeah, that's what it is. You heard it here. I broke I broke the news. You broke the story. Congratulations. I, I, I broke it. Here, here, here's the thing you don't hear often anymore. I I, I have a scoop. I, I have a real, I have a real scoop here. You never hear the press guy anymore. What happened to that guy? I don't know. He always has a scoop. Yeah, I think that I think that guy's been dead since like <laughs> the nineteen forties. Yeah, there's there's a good reason why you don't hear, yeah. hear him anymore. <laughs> I, I got a I got a real scoop over here. Apparently, these broads are just sucking everybody off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that that's news, news, scoop. news for the papers was was uh was Peter Parker a reporter? No, he was a photographer. He's a photographer. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the only thing he was really worth photographing was Spider-Man. Everything else he, <laughs> he took pictures of was not really worth anything. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't, he wasn't even that good of a photographer, but that was his thing, to make money. I don't know why he needed to make money that bad when he was a super genius and could theoretically just like... I don't know, lift a bunch of bri- uh, uh, cars over his head and make money, but he... Whatever... But yeah, he was a shitty photographer, and the only reason he was working at the Planet, I, I'm, I'm my bad, the Daily Bugle, is because Jameson always needed webhead pictures. Mm. It's fucking stupid, and he he never understood. He's like a, uh, a the, the greatest editor on the fucking Planet, 
and he doesn't get it. That only somehow only Parker. You're a little can too fucking pictures. passionate about this fucking. No, topic. dude, it's real. This is real talk. Dude, this is real life. On the he's streets, a, the only reason why Jamie needed is because he needed webhead pictures, and it's you know no, he's man. The Davey, Parker Daily Bugle. It's like they, they, they need a better they, they just need a better story from it, a better reason for him to be around there. The Daily Blue Bugle shit is just dead. I mean, did, were, were they were they copying that off of Superman being a reporter? Probably. Okay. I'm yes. Yeah, Spider Man came afterwards. They, they were just copying that shit. That was a big thing back then. You just a, a journalist was like a pretty uh, a big job. You could be a journalist, a billionaire playboy, or or a, a rapist. Those are the only uh, professions you could have I've in, in, for that, in the fifties. Job and I haven't uh, I haven't found the position. <laughs> Dude, oh, what, has um have you ever read a piece of uh what do you call that when people uh not fan fan fiction? Okay, um I think a good piece of Peter Parker fan fiction would be just creepy peter parker that tricks women into coming to his apartment so he can do photo shoots with them man i thought you were gonna say a storyline where he just takes pictures of stuff that's not spider-man and then they're just like shitty pictures that's not exciting. Be a good story. that is exciting oh it's not i'll explain it to you right now dog okay go for it i told like the story of a guy who's bad at his job and he knows that everyone wants spider-man pictures and that's what I mean, but but only when when they need when they need those pictures. But he's he's passionate about photography, but he's bad at it. He's a superhero, but he's shitty at the thing he's supposed to be good at. He's not creative. He takes awful pictures. Um, the stories that he tries to take pictures of it's just not interesting to anybody. But he keeps trying to bring them into the office. So just have one comic based solely around Peter Parker being shitty at photography. So all the pictures in the comic are his pictures. Well, everything's I mean, out of focus. Right, right. The, the stuff that he's showing, or it, it is in focus, and it's just like, okay, this is a woman walking with her kid. Like, why Why is this interesting? And then Parker tries to explain it, but it's like no one's having it, so he just kind of goes home dejected. But no fighting, no Spider-Man, just Peter Parker and his camera. Okay. That's interesting, dude. Yeah, why would it be asleep. interesting? Because it would show Peter Parker to be inadequ- inadequate in some way, shape, or form, and this would make you feel better. That's a part of it. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, but like th- that is a big. Th- I mean, this this became. I want to see 80s. him be bad at something. This is this became big in the eighties, though. It's just showing them be a little more human. I mean, like basically, I love any superhero outside the context of their costume, even if they are even if they're being good at something. Mm-hmm. I mean, show. Like, but that's not that's not inherently interesting. Like, you you want to see Peter Parker be good at, at fucking science class? Is that interesting? No. But if he's shitty at it, see. But I I, I never had any idea that he wasn't a good photographer. I didn't know that. Mm. Well, I mean, I thought he was an, a reporter. So that, that goes my knowledge right out the window. I guess I sort of superimposed that on because I mean, it's not. It, they got to give him something to do. They got to give the regular. He can't be unemployed. Because then he won't interact with people. So there is no dynamic of, we didn't know you were this guy. That, that's another one. How about, how alluring is it if he's unemployed and he stays home all day, but he just steps outside as Spider-Man? There is no more alter ego because there's only an alter ego in comparison to what people's perception of you is, you know? Yeah. So there is no Daily Bugle photographer. There's only the fucking asshole who sits at home and eats Cheetos all day. <laughs> and then he just steps outside of his door. That's not really interesting anymore, is it? No, that is interesting. So to you, because you're breaking him down. Okay, so okay, so so is that what makes good fan art? Is to just break up the co- the whole construct of the story? Um, not fan fiction. Sorry, uh, dude. Well, you, when you say fan fiction, that's basically people who aren't professionals, right? That's what you mean. Yeah. I don't. I don't really. Uh, yeah. To me personally, yeah. Anything that I haven't seen before. I haven't seen a depiction of Spider Man where he's unemployed and he spends his time outside. Like, and doesn't go to school it, either. Right. I've never seen that before. Mm-hmm. That's what makes it interesting. Um, anything where he's in, like, if he's in school and he's doing shit that I've seen already, it's like every time you add something that I know Peter Parker to, to have to do and it's something that's part of his life, it becomes more and more, like, typical. To me, it's like, does he fight Doc Ock? All right, that's a little more typical. How does does he beat Doc Ock? That's more typical. If he loses, that's less typical. Mm-hmm. So I mean, like, it's just it's a balance of of going typical or atypical. The problem is, and I, I will acknowledge this. Like I was saying, in the eighties, 
there was this huge wave, mostly because of these British, a bunch of British writers came over and they started writing these really, really rough stories where it was like, like, Batman can't get his dick hard. That, that That's kind of an exaggeration, but not really because in Watchmen, Night Owl can't get his dick hard. And that's kind of part of his personality is that he's impotent. He can't even pleasure this woman that he's Night Owl, is a, he's, he's admittingly a counterfeit Batman, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, he is? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, stuff like that. But they're breaking down these heroes, so it's like they're fallible. Like they make huge, huge mistakes. And this just wasn't something that, that comics were doing before then. So yeah, it, it's... It's a common trope now, and I know it can be a little overdone, like, oh, he's on drugs now, or well, the guy's bad. But I honestly, I've not gotten tired of it. I, I still love it all the time, whenever I see it. Hmm. The, the broken down superhero, I think it's great, man. Because usually you won't see that shit. Right. Hmm. Well, let, let's get to our first uh, question. I'm going to read this one out for you guys. Uh, this question comes from, excuse me, this, ca- this question comes from Derek Wags. Uh, thoughts on the new weekend album? Yeah, uh, it, it, this is all you, man. <laughs> you didn't listen I'm, to the album? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit, I'm going to sit over here, dude. What, okay. what will you talk? Go ahead. Well, no, I, I mean, I really don't have much to say about it other than I've, I've heard like maybe half of the records, a uh, half of the songs. That's not enough, man. You got to finish the rest of it, dude. I, I didn't get to finish the rest of it. I listened to it at work, Abel. Hey, man, I didn't get my hair shaved the fuck off so that you could fucking not finish my hey, album, hey, dog. Hey, hey, hold on. Hey, look, in all fairness, hey, Julio, I didn't do it up, up Julio. Julio, you better back the fuck I up, man. Me hey. and my niggas gonna fuck you up, man. Me, okay. and me, me and my little elf niggas are gonna fuck you up, dude. If you don't back the fuck up. You know, you know what? You, you know don't what? back the fuck up. You know what? Listen up. to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. I did that shit on fucking purpose. Yo, get you out of my ear, dog. You fucking stupid hair. You get out of my ear, dog. I'm about to blast you, dog. You know why they call me The weekend? Why do they call you The weekend, Abel? Because I put niggas to sleep on The weekend. All right, see you later. I think, I think that insult Julio, was supposed to come out. Got, a, I think he was, got ethered, Julio. I think he meant to say that he, he slumps them on The weekend, but he kind of came out wrong. Yeah, so the album, you only listened to half. So I listened to half of the album, and uh, I listened to a few cuts on it. I listened to the cut with Kendrick on it, and I wasn't in love with it. It's, I'm, I'm just not one of these people that, oh, because Kendrick's on it, it's a great record. Whatever. Um, what I will say about it is the records seem more upbeat than they normally would, and that goes contrary to what I I hate about the weekend. So that's a good thing because what I've always despised about the weekend is I just can't I can't explain it to you in words, but I'll try to is the dark and sort of tortured artist narrative that he seems to always go with. <laughs> the, the, the songs that just, they're just very gloomy and very airy. And basically what he's always communicating is, girl, I've done so many drugs and I've been with so many women and yeah. I'm being honest and upfront with you. But guess what? I also have a bunch of friends. And if you come on over tonight, you may have <laughs> sex with me. You may have sex with my friends, but you're going to be down with the crew. All right. Is that okay? <laughs> oh my God. He's so honest. He's so I hate it. He's like a fucking pseudo cult leader. I'm not into it. I got to kind of add that. I mean, it, it just seems like he doesn't care. I know I know we, we, we made this <laughs> he character. Doesn't care. He doesn't care. I know we made this character of the weekend where it's like, oh, he wants you to fuck his friends and all that because it's funny. But honestly, I don't I don't think the character in his in his music even even wants you to fuck him or his friend. I think he's he's had so much sex and has done so much drugs that he really can't feel anything. But I don't see the drugs. I, I don't see the drugs. I, I don't hear the drugs in his music. It's I Xanax, do, dude. I it's d- like... Okay, okay. So, okay, so maybe that explains why it's not very... It, why it's so, like, shallow. Yeah. You know, there's not... It, it's not deep. It doesn't cut through your soul. The words don't get there. You know? It, it just all seems like... It just all... It, it it just seems like music for for introverts. It seems like really <laughs> drug induced music for introverts, which is You're an introvert. I am an introvert, but I also have my moments where I'm I'm very social. Um I'm not that sort of an introvert. I'm not the sort of guy that I'm like, I'm in the corner, man, and I'm just over here just living life and just keeping it to myself. That's not really the type of introvert I am. Um I, I would say I'm sort of mid level, but mm. Uh, it, 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 it sort of always suggests like just staying in the corner. I'm so high off these drugs and I'm so spaced out. <laughs> what was that? That's that's what he sounds like. 
No, dude. Yahoo. <laughs> what is that? That's, yeah. that? that's the Yahoo commercial slogan from the <laughs> night, circa 1990. Yeah. Yahoo. <laughs> so that's, what you just... th- that's what his music sounds like to me. And the drug angle is always, it just seems so phony because he looks so sober. I don't think he's done as many drugs as he claims that he's <laughs> what if he's just, Lil he's Wayne sober. has done as many drugs as he claims. I mean, just listen to the shit that Lil Wayne says. Here comes a Lil Wayne impersonation. Young Weezy (laughs) Bay. That's what he sounds like when he talks. I've done done so many drugs. (laughs) I mean, yeah. I'm here on the Double D's cast. Ladies and gentlemen, on the Double D's podcast, we have Lil Wayne imitating a motorcycle engine. Hey, yo, man. It's it's, it's Weezy Bay. A dirt bike. I'm sorry. I got out of my contract with Baby. Okay. You know, I'm on the I'm on the label with Jay Z now. You well, know? Wayne, will you ever stop doing lean? I'm I I, I, I ain't gonna answer that question. <laughs> Am I under oath or something? <laughs> Thanks for the question, Derek. We yeah, appreciate good. it. We appreciate it, dog. We can appreciate you do a, can it. Can you we do it? You. What can was we that? Get a little Wayne from you. Can we get a little Wayne from me? Yeah. Young Weezy F baby, mm, I'm just gonna keep doing lean. I've never heard of Black Lives Matter. I have no idea what you're talking about, Miss. But I'm a gangster. I'm a gangster. Oh, I think I just ethered you. Fuck, did I? Oh my, dude, it was by mistake. I'm sorry. Let me help you off. You the know ground. what? I think you won the accuracy, but mine is funnier. See, but I always tend to win the cadence battle. You maybe you get the tone because normally the people that we that we imitate, you 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 got more that you got more. T- more deepness to your voice, so maybe you could do it better. But dude, I got the cadence. My shit is funny, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's my whole shit, just fucking over the top. Ooh, boy! You know, you know who has a lot of. Uh, oh, I'm so awful at segues. Weezy has tattoos. We have a question about tattoos. How's okay. that for a segue? You cunt. That's a pretty bad one, but go for it. It was good. If I had executed it better, uh, I'd be like, hmm, you know. You know, you know what? Uh, yeah, okay. Here, here's one. Okay, let's rewind back. Let's re- pretend like the last thirty seconds didn't happen. Okay, here, here's here, here's here's how we do it. Okay, hey, hey, do you respect? Uh, hey, what's name something that that a uh, little Wayne has a lot uh, of? Uh, AIDS. Okay, how about something else? Kids. Okay. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> Tattoos. You're, yeah, he's got tattoos. <laughs> Tattoos. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know we have a question about tattoos. Uh, well, look at that. You what don't a, say. What, what, a, what, what a coincidence! A question from Sketchy Lamb on Twitter, um, asking a question that we never really talked about here. Mm-hmm. A question about tattoos. Uh, what are your opinions on well, them? None of us have would tattoos you, unless Dom has get? a tattoo that he's never shown me. I got one on, on my ball sack. Can you get tattooed on your balls? I think it would be very painful. And plus, what's the... Uh, you just did a Bane. What's the you didn't reward? Even know you just did that, dude. What was that? You just did a Bane impression. You had no idea. Oh, did I? I'm sorry. It would be it? very painful. <laughs> He's, that, was, that was one of his words. For That's you. So <laughs> For you, I have tattoos all over my body. Uh, on the balls, I, I would think that it's, it's like high risk, no reward. I think I know what it would sound like to get tattoos on your nuts, though. Uh, what? What? It would sound like a deep buzzing, perhaps. Performed by Julio, probably. Um, That's what it would sound like. What are, you, um, what are, you, what are your, what are your uh, thoughts on, on the tats? Are you I, into women with tats? Yes, that's what we really have to discuss. I like them in moderation. Um, also, when it's not in moderation, because it makes me just feel like, this is an interesting woman. She has a story. Which might not be the case. She might be boring as shit. And and a lot of times it's used to overcompensate for being fucking boring. You know what it is? Is uh, I was talking to some. I was talking to this girl about this. Um, artists. Sometimes people who oh, aren't boy. artists try to look like. Shut up. They try to look like artists mm. or musicians try to look like musicians instead of, like they want to look like an artist more than actually doing art do you know what i'm talking about mm, interesting. like they want to shave the side of their head they want to put a tat on their neck that says uh, uh my words are my soul or some shit like that and it's like yeah well motherfucker when was the last time you fucking wrote something mm-hmm. huh 
Like, hmm. did you spend more time trying to look uh, like good on your Instagram, or are you fucking working? Well, they're working on their image. Yeah, you, yeah, but, but the, it's just fucking. It means nothing. Mm-hmm. Actually, it means a lot if you're. I mean, all right, it doesn't matter what you look like to people, but it is. There's this public perception of like what an artist looks like, and the reality is like the best artists just look like fucking Joe Schmoes, man. Musicians, great, brilliant musicians, just look like just regular ass people. But that's that doesn't really sell, right? It's not. It's not like a glamorous idea, and even if I mean you can you can extend this over to um the image of okay tell me the the stereotypical image of a prolific author, like a of a good prolific writer. author it's they wear dark, uh, dark scuffed up clothing. Mm-hmm. There's no brightness. It's all like forest green, navy blue. Um, uh, maybe walks around with a satchel. Yeah, a satchel with you know like you know just, just papers in it. Uh, <laughs> hair is always you know just very unkept, papers. unkept, and just sort of just it, Woody Allen. Yeah, Woody exactly. Allen is the you know doesn't necessarily. I mean, if you're black, if you're you know if you're fucking Irish, obviously you would have a different sort of temperament. But Woody a- Woody Allen's look is the look of what people consider writers to be. Yeah, and usually, I mean, you forgot drunk. Mm. I mean, like, there's the drunk thing, and there's the drug aspect. Um, and yeah, and I was and I was listening to clips of Bukowski uh, when you reminded me about him last week. I did. Yeah, you mentioned Bukowski to me, and you know the funny thing is, I've never, I've never read any of his. Have you? No, I, Mike C. Town's a huge fan. He's of a him. huge Bukowski fan. Oh, yeah. it'd be great to talk to him about it because you know, <laughs> the videos that I've seen of him, he's just like just an he's got ang- a drunk asshole. Yeah, just he's just like angry and just very you know it I, I was told i don't know where i heard this but i was told that that hemingway once went on a trip with a man and his wife they went out to a trip somewhere and by the end of the trip hemingway took her from him and somehow the man was he was okay with something that worked out that way where where he totally alphaed him out you know uh, these are just the myths that you hear know, yeah. that you hear about Hemingway you know that he was just that much of a man's man oh and Bukowski would seem like he would tr- he's trying to go for that same sort of you know I'm candid I'm I'm intense this means this means I'm this means I know pain this means I know writing right Mm. That, but it's entertaining to listen to. It's really entertaining to watch. Um, mm. But uh, I mean, w- w- maybe we'll get to that. But but let's let's get back to this question. Um, on on tattoos, tattoos on women. On ta- well, I'll I'll say tattoos personally. I've had ideas for tattoos um, that I won't share here because I don't want to be the, I don't no. want to be the guy in the bar. No, <laughs> motherfucker. This is your show. <laughs> you have to say it. I, I, it's it, it was it's it's a dumb it's a dumb idea. This, it's it's not necessary for me to say it because I never got it. What is it? No, it is necessary. What is it? Okay, okay. So I had an idea. You're gonna say it's dumb. Uh, oh God, here we go. <laughs> Prepare to laugh. Prepare to laugh, child. No, We're gonna laugh. It's not happening. We're gonna laugh at the top of our lungs in ten seconds. Here we go. Here we go. Do you think after ah! that anything's no, no, gonna? No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm you think sorry, I'm gonna share mean, anything with you? After I don't, I don't, I don't. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, saying go a ahead, fucking go ahead. word. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, sorry. I'm gonna move on. No, no, please, please. I, I will laugh. I will wait laugh. a minute, wait a minute. Before I say anything, like, are you fucking kidding me? So you've never had? You can fucking draw a tattoo, and you've never desired to put anything on yourself. No, dude. I mean, like, I, I had some idea. Okay. The reason and I know what you're trying to do, you're trying to throw me off your scent, and it's not gonna fucking work. I'm coming back, right back where I was. Okay, prepare to laugh, everybody. Um, <laughs> my problem with tattoo design when people at okay, uh, okay, I'll just talk about myself. Like if I draw all the time, and I have like kind of a phobia about d- drawing something that goes on my own body because like. I every year I'm I'm improving or or trying to change what I do so it's like I'm going to have some shit from last year on my body like why would I like and it's permanently on me like at some point I'm going to look down and be like what the fuck was I doing like this is just dumb it's late. like what the what well, is this what, what, what if it's ugh. what if it's just simply a stamp 
a stamp of where your mind was. DSC. <laughs> DSC. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, I, I just want to I just want to remind everybody that uh, two years ago uh, when I went out for my birthday and Dom came out with all you know my family and my friends and everybody wrote on the birthday card like happy oh. birthday <laughs> and Dom wrote subscribe to DSC. <laughs> I think I still have that card somewhere around here. You know that was the best fucking thing on that card. Dude. It's fucking you subscribe, dude. That's what's important here, not your birthday. I just, I just like, I, I, I circle everyone's name and make sure that they go to my channel. <laughs> subscribe to see everybody. But um, a stamp. So you're saying I it's perceive a, it right, as right. It's where a I mark was. of what maybe your mind was, and if you look back at it and say, well, this was kind of fucking trivial. This was kind of silly. Then it's like, okay, well, that's. Do you want trivial on your body? Well, not trivial in the sense that, oh, my God, I would totally fucking regret this. this is so fucking moronic. Why did I ever get right. it? Well, you know, right. the, so so I would say that I guess it's a good idea to if you if you sort of feel that way, then put it somewhere that's, you know, it obscures the tattoo. Don't put it on your forearm. Don't be an asshole, you know. But then again, you should probably not mm. put anything on your body if you feel uncertain about it, you know. Yeah. Maybe it's just all about making a decision. Hmm? How about that? <sighs> you're you're really onto something. It's like choosing to do something. Choosing to do something permanent, yeah, right? Just do it. Just just put Like I should get a girl pregnant like right uh, now. Well, th well that's, get a girl pregnant. that's a bit different. I mean, if you I should create a child <laughs> right now. That's what I against her own will. Against her own will. That's exactly what you should do. Um no, but it so you so never wow that that that's really a surprise to me that you would never do that that that's interesting. Uh, I honestly like you made a good, you made a good argument, and I think, I think what I would what I would want to do is like, uh, I want to have something simple. If I if I make the design as simple as possible, and it's not something very elaborate, I think the more simple the design, um the more okay I'll feel with it in the future. But I don't want to go, like, but I, it, it's annoying to me. Like, like people do this. Like, they'll do, like, a square or, like, a circle. That's as simple as you can get with it, with any sort of tattoo. But then I don't want to feel like some hipster who has, like, a circle on his arm. Like, what the fuck does that mean? Like, why would you do that? Like, knowing full well that I can draw, I can do something that's on the opposite spectrum of a circle. Why would I just go back? And do that, but maybe that means something too to do something that's super simple. But this is, I, I mean, that, that's that's the kind of shit I think about. Like, I don't know, I don't know which which way to go. I don't know if I should do like super super simple and just draw a very thin band around my arm every time something good happens to me, and just keep adding bands, like really really thin bands, like like the like maybe a millimeter thick. Mm. Um, I thought about that. Uh, but that's also like, why do I? Need, I don't need to remind myself that shit happens. Like I, I, I'm doing that every fucking day when I'm like writing and drawing shit and making stupid ass videos of myself. Like I can look back and know what I'm going through. So, uh, the point I'm trying to make is, what was the tattoo design you wanted? Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> can, can you? Are you not gonna say it? All right, People all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll say it. Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, this may have been something that I mentioned on the show before, but uh, but not as a tattoo. So there's a uh, th there's an old Eastern um, Eastern philosophical proverb. <laughs> you love the way this is going. Picture this setting as I'm saying it. Picture this setting. We're at a bar. It's two o'clock in the morning. You've got a few Jack and Diets in you, and we're trying to talk to two girls, and they're just rolling their eyes while I'm just talking about myself. Yeah, it's like, let me tell you <laughs> so, more. So, so there's an Eastern philosophical proverb, and uh, what it is? No, seriously. Um, what it is is uh, it's the, it's a question that's asked, and it's asked um is a uh, is a zebra uh, a a black horse with white stripes. Or a white or a white horse with black stripes. That's a lot of words. Well, no, I'm getting to a point. Shut the fuck up, and I'll oh, tell sorry. you. Jesus, okay. you wanted to know. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, so is okay. a zebra a black horse with white stripes, or a or a white horse with black stripes? So the so the answer is that it's an invisible horse. Which has been Wait, what? it's an invisible horse. Ah, you like it. 
Uh, you see, this would be you at a bar right now, so you're interested. So now you want to fuck me. I, I did. I, I can't. So the lie. answer what, what is, it it's mean? an invisible horse, which has been striped black and white, so people won't bump into it. The analogy here is that the zebra is life, and people uh, add their own uh, their own colors to the zebra, which is which is life, which is an invisible state of affairs. That we make up. It's, it sort of lends itself to Shakespeare's nothing is real but thinking makes it so. That sort of, it's along the lines of that. Perception, uh, contrast, uh, something good or bad, what's only good or bad, the way you view it, it's black, it's white to me. It's, it's very simple. So my idea was to just get a simple, just a, a small zebra, just a small little zebra just somewhere and that, that's all it was and that, that's just the, the idea behind it but i wasn't gonna get all that text on it i wasn't gonna do that you know what would have been tight what is if uh if, you, if i would have put subscribe to dsc under it yeah that, that'll be tight no but like do you remember like the zebra stripe gum no i don't <laughs> oh dude please you don't remember uh what was it called fruit stripe you remember fruit stripe gum wait a little ugly stupid ass zebra on it like, he was, like, kicking a soccer ball. Wait, hold on one second. Fruit Stripe. Okay, you guys out there, it's, like, a very rainbow-colored gum. that It was, like, it was very popular, I think, in the, probably in the 80s and 90s when we were kids. And they were, it was, like, a, it was a hyper-fruity gum. Like, it would taste like a real, you remember this shit. So I'll get that zebra. Yeah, get him with the with soccer the ball. Soccer ball. <laughs> Where? <laughs> you, should, you should get him. Or just him with the face, and then he's speaking. <laughs> see, see what saying? you guys, what you guys already knew was I was already hesitant to put this out into Dom's ears because I knew that Dom was just gonna fucking marginalize <laughs> the shit out of it as soon as I told him, and that's exactly what he did. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're just Charlie. You're just Charlie Brown with the dude. You guys, please, please, you guys, relentlessly. I got okay. No, actually, actually no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hold back. Because you know what? Recently. Dom and his white girls came to bite me in my stupid black anus, and I need revenge. Okay. All right. That's, that, 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 that's fine. That's fine. I need you guys to remember this zebra, okay? Remember the zebra? Re- just remember him. Remember the fruit stripe oh. gum, all right? All right. So, I mean, get, uh, get, get off, uh, I'll get off shitting on you mode for a sec. I'll get back to that later. But, like... Are, are you you like the idea of that allegory because it's basically saying that life has no meaning until we attach meaning to it? Yeah, but but, Humans but it's always important to, to remember that when you say life is no meaning, it's not meant to be said in the negative sense. Because when you tell people that life has no meaning, people get scared. It's like, oh, just die. Right, right. Just people die. think, oh, yeah. so you just so you just you're you're fucking not. No, that's not necessarily what I mean. Yeah, it it l- don't even say life itself. I guess we can just say. Any situation doesn't really have any meaning until you decide what it is, until you decide Mm. what it's going to be. This doesn't have to be everything on a grand scale. This can be just your manner of reacting to how somebody approaches you. If somebody wants to react uh, to you and, 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 you know, just yell at you and, you know, you can choose to look at this person a different way. You can look at this person as an angry person. You can look at this person as, 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 as a problem, or you can look at this person as, as a solution. You can look at this person as maybe they're getting to something. There's something that they're trying to get out. You know, it's, yeah. it's very kumbaya, and obviously this isn't, this isn't how normal adults walk about life thinking every day because then you're just a, you're a monk, basically. But it is, it's, I think, it's, a, I think it's, a, it's, it's an important I think it's an important component to life, and I think it's something that should always be remembered uh, when you get deep into your feelings and when you're fucking convinced about a stupid story in your head, whether it's something that you've told yourself that you can't do. Uh, it all applies to that. It all applies to how you're willing to look at it. Are you going to look at it in this, in this sense or in, or, or in the opposite sense? So you gain comfort in, in, in thinking this way? Yeah, because it's because it, it because what it really says is that it's all up to you. It's all up to you. No one thing is 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 certain, you know. Other than you know, I mean, no one thing is bad except you know an act of violence. If somebody comes up to you and chops your fucking arm off, then you've caused harm to somebody else. Now that's obviously a shitty thing to do. But right. if somebody 
has harsh words for you if somebody's trying to give you advice and maybe you're you're in a point in your life where you're not you're not prepared to take it you're not pre- sort of prepared to take the advice um you may view it as something negative or you may view it as something you know something that's constructive it it depends so i i think mm. it's all up to how you're willing to look at it and i think that that's what it entails and also it's a very easy way to fuck stupid women be, <laughs> to fuck stupid <laughs> women because there we go there we there go we yeah go. yeah 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 you can have sex with a lot of women by having this tattoo by the way because it it'll, it'll the fruit strike it'll, <laughs> it'll give them i love fruit it'll strike. give them the inclination that that you are you are deep all the while remembering, whenever you have thoughts like this, whenever you have these, uh, you know, grand thoughts about life, what you always have to remember is that at, on the other side of that, you are a silly, you're a silly human being that shouldn't take yourself seriously at all. So, yeah, because you're the dummy with the with the fucking uh, uh, zebra with the soccer ball. There is no and soccer ball. Pussy, plus I, there's a soccer ball, dude. This that's the no. Listen, you add the soccer ball because that's the playfulness, dude. It's all a fucking joke anyway, like the comedian from Watchmen, dude. <laughs> okay. You can't even you know I'm right. No, it's dude. stupid. Uh but no, you can you can definitely get laid off of it. I think very easily because you know, you're gonna come off as a yoga instructor, even though that's not your you know, that's not your uh that's not your goal here, but that's definitely a byproduct of the tattoo. I will say that. Hmm. Yeah. You know what uh one thing I also have to say is like one good thing to do if you're if you're saying whatever stupid philosophical shit you guys believe in, why does it have to be stupid? Remember, what, what is it? What, what, what is this? That's the point. That's yeah, but when point. you start off as a stupid, no, that, that's the point. Whenever you're saying whatever you fucking believe in, you got to remember that it's like you you can you can laugh about it. That's the point. Going into like your experiences with people, that's that's what separates you from the yoga. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I get it. But when you, you say, when you say it like that, that's the but no, but it, fuck, but that that's the point I'm trying. No, to I, make. I get the point. You're but before, yeah, but like, make sure to fucking throw a joke in every once in a while. That's what makes you not a fedora uh, wearing <laughs> neck beard. That you're not like, oh, this is a <laughs> like. Do it. Just fucking chill and make a joke I've, every once I've, in a while. Uh, I've encountered people that I've like regretted asking them about the meanings to their tattoo. I remember I asked, uh, uh, I, I asked a, uh, I think it was an ex boyfriend of my sister's. He had something on his tattoo, and it was just like, "This is death, and this is life." <laughs> it was like this really dark thing. I'm like, <laughs> was it in Spanish? <laughs> of course it was. Um, yeah, it was just like, "This is death." Aki, aki. Esta es esta muerto. Uh, aquí es 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 vida. <laughs> Why do you sound like okay. a Mexican? Aquí es okay. vida. <laughs> ah, eh. Aquí es muerte. <laughs> okay. Okay, cabrón. Okay. No fucking I, no fucking I think that's me, I man. think that's Julio's tattoo. <laughs> no, Julio. Get get away from the mic, Julio. Get away. Nah, dude. Beat, beat it. it, Julio. He's a shit. Fucking dick. Uh, th- what, what was his name who asked that question? Uh, Sketchy thank Lamb. You, thank you for the... Next preguntas. Dude, we're, we're, we're getting a lot of questions. Like, still, as we're doing the podcast at 12.01, uh, 12.01 a.m., we're still getting questions. I'm sorry, guys. We're not going to be able uh, to get to you. Brock3000 and BVRNZ. I'm sorry, guys. Um, okay, so we got the... Oh. Otra vez. We got the next one from Khaled Seventeen Stan. He says, uh, "Hey man, it's Khaled. Please say that on the podcast." Uh, my question is, what was your favorite video game growing up? Thanks. Let's start with you because you know I'm going to run long okay, on okay, this. Okay, one. okay, okay, okay. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out, though. Golden Eye. Okay, Golden Eye. Let me tell. Let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Daddy was a force to be reckoned with in that multiplayer. I did not. You give me grenade launchers, and it was a wrap for you. It was a. I got so good with just making. Just it. It was just. Uh, we, me, and my friends, we used to record games of Goldeneye, right? So we would just record for hours and hours and hours, and I would just watch it like football film. Just how I would perfectly place just 
grenade launchers just to ricochet off a few walls and it made its way onto your screen and all you saw was the fanny fanny just the, yeah. just the red just overcame the screen it was just it was beautiful it was like i was putting the the, the breast you know the, just that last little bre- breast mark on, on on the mona lisa bro i was just i was just, I just <laughs> what the breast yeah, mark? yeah i was just finishing the breast it's dumb dog i was just finishing the tit <laughs> bro you know what i'm saying <laughs> Just finishing the tip. Dumb, I'm pretty sure that was the last part because that's what had to be perfected. I'm gonna say some shit about GoldenEye and multiplayer games. A lot of you guys are gonna shit on me. Fuck you anyway. I'm not good at multiplayer. I Ooh. get I get scared and I get I, I get anxious whenever I play multiplayer games. To this day, that's why I really don't like multiplayer. I'm not gonna be fighting against you. I like co-op because it's a lot more chill for me. And whatever, call me a bitch if you want. So Goldeneye, I wasn't good at multiplayer, didn't really like doing it. I loved the single player, however. Did you play the single player campaign? Uh, single players, yes, I did. I was good at those two. You know what was really was really cool about Goldeneye it was many things. But remember the start menu? Yes. When you were looking through the yeah, files. But you look but you look at your watch. Okay, the whole, yes, you you're look right. down at your wrist. And the whole thing is you flicking, you're flicking the watch. They they redid this thing in Fallout Four actually with the Pip Boy. But anyway, like it's so it was such a cool thing to do. Like you, you're just standing there while you're getting shot at, looking through the start menu. It's Th- a cool, that's just how cool James Bond is. Like, wait a minute, I gotta check my time. I gotta pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've aged. Um, my favorite video game as a kid. There are so fucking many, but I gotta say Final Fantasy Seven. Based on, I think, I think that was the first game that made me, that made an emotional connection with me, and that's why it, it like, I never cried. What? 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 <laughs> what, what are you t- crying? I never cried. <laughs> why I, I, why I, are you I, discussing games, games crying since, about a video game? Look, look. Since then, I can name two games that made me cry. I'm not going to say them because you guys what, are going to. What's happening, dude? It's happened, man. What? It's happened. But look, look. anyway, Final Fantasy VII was a very emotional, deep story that was just like, when you you get a perfect piece of art like that, when you get the gameplay combined with the music, the cinematics, like the, the, the writing of it, the pacing too. It's like you start out in this game as a mercenary who's just trying to make money and all of a sudden you just get forcefully yanked into this huge plot to overthrow the government and save the planet from getting uh, destroyed by a giant meteor and it's just it's one of the best games of all time Final Fantasy 7 love it love it and this is what this was uh, one of the main inspirations behind hip hop RPG um yeah I would say so and Final Fantasy 6 visually but yeah, Final Fantasy VI and Seven, man, those are huge, huge inspirations, dude. Like, like the, the, just put it in perspective, these games, like you play one and you're putting like a hundred twenty hours into it. Like you're sitting there as a kid, just like locked in, and just going through this story, just a hundred hours. Some people spend hundreds of hours on that. That's I'm not a completionist, days. so I don't do. Fucking yeah, kidding dude. me? This shit's real, dog. In these streets, man. I mean, shit's a joke. That's why people, like, dude, like, th- this stuff is, is hu- in, in people's lives. Like, still to this day, I'll just be walking down the street, and I just hear the music in my head. I'll just play it back and just think about, like, the, the What was the point in Final Fantasy? What were we supposed to do? Um, I don't know how to answer that question. De- uh, okay, it depends on which one, but if I boil it down, it's always a small group of people challenging an oppressive government system. That's every mm. game, every Final Fantasy game. Your goal is just to experience whatever the characters are doing. Like, you start out, it's not your story, it's theirs. So you're, you're playing through their story, but there are an infinite amount of choices you can make. Like, you want to be a magic guy? Well, do magic. If you want to fight people with just hitting them with sticks and shit, do that. Um, you have a lot of choices to make in the game as far as a story. Like, let's say you run up to someone and... and they're, they're evil, you can decide to kill them or not, and that'll affect the rest that's, of the that's, game. That's, 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 that's the point. point. You just, just want to spend, 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 spend,